All right, this video is on the skeletal system. So let's see what types of questions we got to prepare ourselves for. All right, so hopefully, so we'll go over these questions briefly here. Um, and hopefully have them in our minds as we're going through the video. Um, and I'll try to pull back to these questions while we're dealing with these specific questions. And then you'll see the questions again at the end. And hopefully you can uh, answer them all correctly and I'll help you be more ready for this part of the exam. Okay, so dilated ends of bones, what are those called? What surrounds and protects bone? Um, the Haversian canal, what is the function of that? Uh, what types of bones are filled with, with marrow? And can we give an example of that type of bone? Um, what types of bones protect our internal organs, as well as an example? And then finally, uh, rheumatoid versus normal arthritis. All right, so let's get going here. All right, so we start off with just like the basic parts of the skeleton, which there are two. Uh, and that's the axial and the appendicular. So the difference is the appendicular skeleton is, compo is composed of the limb bones, scapula, pelvis, and clavicle while the axial skeleton consists of the skull, vertebrae, rib cage, and hyoid bone. Okay, so those are the differences there. We need to be familiar with that type of stuff. All right, and then we get into the actual uh, types of bone. So you, we'll take a look at the long bone first, uh, which we see there on the top left. Uh, long bones are hollow, they're filled with marrow, and are longer than they are wide, right? So not surprisingly, because it's called long bone, bone it's long all right but there was a key point that we just said there which was that it was filled with marrow and i believe that's if you go down to the fourth bullet point there which type of bones are filled with marrow right and then whoa went too far um and then give an example right and we just gave a few examples right as for our as far as types of bone uh the femur the tibia the fibula the metatarsals, the humerus, metacarpals, those are all long types of bone. Those are all long bones. So that's several examples for you um, that we want to be able to name off. If you know that, right, again, filled with marrow, they're longer than they are wide, not surprising, and then some examples like the femur or the tibia are probably the two most common. <clears throat> okay, short bones, they're kind of bottom left, right? are shorter, or sorry, are wider than they are long. And some typical examples are the carpals and the tarpals. And this again, it says brisk bone down there. And it's that short bones. Uh, flat bones, as we go up again to the top of the screen, now on the right hand side, flat bones, uh, they provide protection to internal organs. And examples include the sternum, the ribs, and the pelvis. And so I believe that was also one of our questions. If we go down to bullet point five, what type of bones protect our internal organs? There we go, flat bones. Examples, uh, ribs, pelvis, sternum. And also irregular bones. So they can vary in shape. Uh, examples include the bones of the vertebrae column, the skull, or the knee and the elbow. So I don't think that was one of our questions, but still that's the types of bone. And we won't worry about the sesamoid bone. So we'll move on here. Okay, so moving on. Uh, spongy bone is less dense than compact bone, is located at the end of bones, and contains bone marrow. Bone marrow, you should know, is the site of red blood cell production, while compact bone supports the body and stores calcium. With ligaments and tendons, just real basic, uh, ligaments attach bone to bone and tendons attach muscle to bone. You could easily see a question just testing your basic knowledge on ligaments and tendons. At the articulating ends of bone is hyaline cartilage, which both prevents direct bone contact and cushions the joint. Uh, with long bones, they do have a cylindrical shaft called the diaphysis. Uh, that's an important term to know. Uh, long bones also have dilated ends called the epiphysis. Okay, and I believe that was a question. Let's go back. 
Uh, very first question here. What are the dilated ends of bones called? That's the epiphysis right there. Uh, and also there's a related epiphyseal plate. That's the site of new bone growth. So it's a growth plate. And the periosteum is a growth plate and it surrounds and protects the bones. And so periosteum, so that was a question as well. What surrounds and protects the bone? That's the periosteum. Okay, moving on to structure of bone. So here we have osteoplasts, osteoclasts, osteocytes. What are all these things? So osteoblasts build bone and osteoclasts break it down. Osteocytes sense mechanical stress and they regulate both the osteoblasts and the osteoclasts. As we're looking at this, uh, looking down at the Haversian canals, uh, they provide nutrients to the bone cells, which when it says to the bone cells, we mean to the osteoblasts, the osteoclasts, and the osteocytes. Okay, <clears throat> so it provides nutrients to the bone cells. Nutrients are an important one to be thinking about there, and that relates to question three, I believe. Uh, what is the function of the Haversian canal? provide nutrients to the bone cells. Uh, the Volkmann canals, which you don't see written down there, but uh, Volkmann canals connect the Haversian, Haversian canals and enable nutrient exchange. So again, staying focused on nutrients. And finally, the canaliculi enable cellular communication. Okay, as we take a look at joints, uh, we will have three important ones and they're all shown right there. The fibrous joints are held together by ligaments and cannot be moved. Bones in the skull are the most common example of a fibrous joint. Synovial joints are ball and socket hinge and pivot joints. So, so types of synovial joints can be found in the knee, elbow, hip, shoulder, the femur and the scapula our synovial joints and then we also have cartilaginous joints which are found when two bones are connected by cartilage and are somewhat movable. Cartilaginous joints could be found between vertebrae and the spine for example. Okay and then <clears throat> we get to arthritis. All right. <clears throat> so rheumatoid, rheumatoid arthritis it's an autoimmune disease that is caused by immune cells attacking either the cartilage or joint lining, okay? And so one of our questions, our last one, was what differentiates rheumatoid arthritis from normal arthritis? Okay, so rheumatoid is autoimmune disease that is caused by immune cells attacking either the cartilage or joint lining, while your regular arthritis is it just develops when cartilage between joints breaks down over time. So that's the difference. Uh, osteoarthritis is a degenerative, degenerative joint disease characterized by the loss of cushioning cartilage. And <clears throat> excuse me. And then finally, osteoporosis is caused by lack of calcium and vitamin D in the body, and is also characterized by bone loss that occurs naturally in aging. Okay. And then I guess we don't have the questions at the end. So if we went back to the beginning here, sorry about that. Went back to the beginning. Here's our questions, right, that we wanted to go over. So we have six of them. So hopefully uh, at this point you can answer all these six questions based on our video. If you have to go back through the video again to check to make sure you can answer these, definitely go for it. And hopefully this helps you out.